I just, uh, I just told Dr. Tice that the mingle minute gets very lonely up here. We just kind of stand up here and just watch everybody mingle and make friends. It's like being in middle school again at the first dance. <laughs> just kind of standing in the corner waiting for someone to come up. Um, each month we plant among you a secret shaker and appropriately this month's secret shaker is from Western Kentucky University Owensboro. Uh, Kevin Dorth, where are you? Oh, Kevin's right down front. All right, Kevin, who'd you choose this morning? Jesse. Jesse Canary. Jesse Canary, is that you? St stand up, girl, come here. We have a gigantic. Western Kentucky University gift basket for you and tucked somewhere among the, uh, the uh, tissue paper is tuition for fall. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. <laughs> At this time, we would like to welcome the folks who are tuning in this morning uh, on WOMI Owensboro Radio listeners at 99.1 FM and 1490 AM. And at this time, we're going to recognize our brand new chamber members, and we actually have a pretty good handful for June, so excited about that. So let's get started. Advanced LEDs is a manufacturer and distributor of LED lighting and has a BPI certified energy auditor on staff. They offer free energy audits that can help businesses recognize their wasteful energy practices and in turn offer solutions so that they can become more energy efficient. So please welcome Jack Wishy from Advanced LEDs. <laughs> Alorica is a leader in the, biz the business process outsourcing industry. Their focus is creating insanely great experiences for their customers through voice, online, and social media. They're proud to passionately serve their clients in the communications, financial services, healthcare, retail, and tech companies. They have more than 100,000 insanely great team members located in 150 locations across 16 countries. So please welcome John Malloy, Rick Spear, and the team from Alorica. Bath Fitter provides premium quality acrylic tubs, showers, and walls that are custom made and installed right over your existing fixtures in as little as one day. Their line also includes acrylic bathtubs, freestanding bathtub or shower bases, acrylic seamless walls, domed ceilings, doors, accessories, and wainscoting. They offer custom solutions to meet your bathroom remodeling needs. So please welcome Bath Fitter. Cherokee Millwright and Mechanical has been providing top-notch service since 1993. They're a full-service Millwright company specializing in equipment installations, rigging and hauling services, plant relocations, and various forms of fabrication. The company was founded to fulfill the growing need for a Millwright company uh, that treats customers like family and equipment with care. Since then, the company has just taken off and filled its portfolio with projects from around the globe. So please welcome Karen Williams and Tyler Beto from Cherokee Millwright and Mechanical. <laughs> CrossFit Vox, located at 1316 Alsup Lane, is Owensboro's premier fitness facility. The instructor-led classes at Vox are coached by certified trainers and are geared to all levels of fitness. Athletes, young and old, have seen the benefits of CrossFit's methodology of utilizing functional movements performed at a very high intensity. For more information, you can visit CrossFitVox.com. And please welcome Rick Kim from CrossFit Vox. <laughs> JJ's Pizza is a family-owned business that was started in Carma, Illinois by Jimmy Jones in 1986 relocated to Lewisport, Kentucky in uh, 1991. 
JJ's was purchased by Joanne Jones Shiver and Robert Shiver Jr. in 2011. They have grown the business by adding new products and best of all, a brand new location in Thruston. The tradition continues, always fresh, never frozen, hand-tossed pizza. So please welcome Joanne Jones Shiver and Robert Shiver Jr. from JJ's Pizza. Just Chill is a locally owned business right here in Owensboro. They block, shave, and mix all their flavors in-house to serve you a refreshing Hawaiian shaved ice treat uh, through the summer. Just Chill is located at 3511 Frederick Street. Please welcome uh, Jamie Sharp, Nick Harris, Taylor Holcomb from Just Chill. Maui Whitening's mission is to make teeth whitening affordable, convenient, and effective. At Maui Whitening, you can relax because you know that you're going to receive quality products and equipment to produce an overall effective, whiter smile. They use only professional grade whitening products, and Maui Whitening offers professional teeth whitening sessions at a fraction of the cost of what you would pay to have your teeth whitened at other locations. And they use the same great equipment and products used in dental offices across the country. So please welcome Landon Taylor and the folks from Maui Whitening. Sears Hometown is a unique retail business opportunity with no inventory expense. National Retailer primarily focuses on selling home appliances, lawn and garden tools, in addition to other products that are offered through their websites. Additional revenue opportunities are available by adding Kitchen Tune-Up and OxyFresh franchises to the store. So please welcome Anita McAllister from Sears Hometown. Shield Security Services, LLC, is the area's leader in site and event-related security services and provides a wide range of protective security for your business and your organization. Shield Security's officers are highly trained, experienced professionals and are all current off-duty or recently retired professional peace officers. For more information, you can visit shieldofficers.com. So please welcome Randall Foster from Shield Security Services. SIP is a new wine bar and tasting room located in the Avenue 54 shops. They carry over 80 wines and have more than 25 to taste each day. No, I'm having lunch today. They also sell wines by the bottle. They have craft specialty beers, bourbons, and they serve small finger foods. Oh, we really are having lunch there today. Uh, that pair well with the wines they have. So please welcome Karen Hobelman from SIP Owensboro. <laughs> She has samples in her purse. <laughs> Not judging, just sharing. Um, it is time for us to recognize um, our elected officials who are with us this morning. So at this time, if you all would please stand so we can give you a big uh, rousing round of applause for your service. Thank you so much. So all of our elected officials, please stand. They're kind of sprinkled throughout today. We have folks from the local, state, and national level with us today. So thank you all so much for being with us here at Rooster Booster. And it is now time to honor our Ambassador of the Month. And at this time, we'll ask all of our ambassadors to stand. These folks are out at pretty much every, every ribbon cutting that we have. They're always supporting our new businesses and existing members. So ambassadors, please stand. And our Ambassador of the Month this month is Louise Murdoch from Jago Homes. And Louise is getting herself a $50 gift card to Bella Regaza Boutique. There you go. Congratulations. At this time, it is uh, our time to introduce our breakfast sponsor. And uh, we would like to welcome and uh, give a big round of applause from WKU Owensboro, Owensboro President, uh, Dr. Jean Tice. On behalf of the WKU Owensboro uh, students, faculty, and staff, I'd like to welcome you here to this uh, great event today. I first would like to recognize a few people. I'd like the uh, staff, and you can identify them, they're all wearing red, and the faculty 
Would you all stand up? Uh, I, I want you to uh, recognize them. They are the ones that have made this look so great. They have done so much work setting everything out. So thank you all very much for what you've done. I also would like to uh, recognize the our uh, Owensboro Campus Advisory Board, and I see many of them are here. Would the advisory board members please stand and be recognized? <clears throat> We rely heavily at our campus on the direction and support of this group. They help us identify what we need in terms of workforce, what are the workforce development needs, what kind of academic programs will support those uh, efforts that we're, we're working with. I also have a couple individuals I'd like to recognize. Uh, uh, Dr. Dennis George. Dennis, if you would stand up. Dennis is the Associate Provost for regional higher education. He works with all of our three regional campuses and the main campus trying to grow our campuses. Thank you for your support and leadership, Dennis. <laughs> and, and one more individual I'd like to recognize, Robin Taylor. Robin, would you please stand? Robin is the Vice President for Public Affairs and also a great supporter of our regional campuses. Thank you, Robin. Our WKU Owensboro campus is an upper division campus. We do not teach freshman or sophomore students. We rely on our partner, OCTC, to uh, educate freshmen and sophomores, and about 90% of our students that are enrolled started their education at OCTC. So this is a great partnership that we have with OCTC. We graduated about 200 students this past year, fall, spring, and summer. About 37% of that group were the first in their family to achieve a bachelor's degree, very significant. We, <clears throat> the average age of our students here are about, is about 28. The youngest, and this is something new for us was 19 that graduated, the oldest was 71. So we have quite a range of students. <laughs> if you have a, uh, a student, if you have someone in your family that is taking a dual credit course for, from uh, WKU or enrolled in the community college or you're thinking about transferring to uh, WKU, one piece of advice I hope you will remember is you need to meet with an academic advisor. And we have academic advisors that can help you. You bring all the pieces and we'll put it together and put together a plan that will help you get a bachelor's degree. But that first step is critical that you uh, meet with that academic advisor. Our students here that graduate from this campus want to work in this particular community. And guess what? You are employers. We want to make a connection with you. And some of the things that we're doing, trying to make better connections with the local businesses and, and our students, one is internships. We've we're finding that internships are very important. We've placed over 50 students in local businesses, and we have worked with over 100 different businesses uh, in trying to identify sites for internships. And all of this effort, and I've got to recognize uh, David Powers. David, stand up, because I want all of you to see David. <laughs> If, if you've got a career question, this is the man I want you to, 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 to talk to. We also assist you. If you have a job opening, we would encourage you to use some of our services. We'll post it on Facebook, Twitter, uh, career blog. David's got all kinds of things. We've also got uh, career link. 
And Career Link this past year had 33,000 visits to that site. So this is a great way to expose jobs that you may have available that our students would be, be interested in. <clears throat> we also have programs dealing with, we hear from businesses, you want employees with soft skills. You have a handout on your desk or on your table that deals with the Dynamic Leadership Institute. This is designed specifically to train students with uh, soft skills. And you can see some of the particular areas uh, if you'll take, take a look at that. Uh, over half of our students have gone through at least one of these phases of the DLI program. It is critical. As a matter of fact, we have uh, 30 OCTC students who currently are, will finish the uh, third phase of the Dynamic Leadership Institute tomorrow, uh, and they're all associated with the Ready to Work, Work and Learn program here associated with OCTC. We also have a very special program. On the other side of this is what we call the EDGE program. And this is a program that David has created. And in order for a student to graduate from our EDGE program, and I want to emphasize that the dynamic leadership and the EDGE programs, this, these are things these students are doing in addition to their classroom responsibilities. So what do they have to do to qualify to be a, uh, in our EDGE program? They have to complete an individual personal career plan. They have to complete all three phases of DLI that we've talked about. They have to engage in professional network, that uh, an online program. They have to do an internship experience, and they have to, do, to create their own professional portfolio. Now, I'm pleased to introduce the first group that has completed this. This group of students right here in front of me, please stand and, and recognize them for the hard work they have put in. <laughs> and, and if you have a potential position open, you need to come after the meeting and come down here and meet some of these, these students. The last thing I want to talk about is the uh, corporate services that our Owensboro campus Provides. We provide free meeting space. We provide leadership training, executive leadership training for businesses and industries. As a matter of fact, uh, Big Rivers supervisors are on our campus all day today going through executive training. So there are a lot of things that we're trying to do to support and work with the local businesses. Again, Thank you for being here this morning. We want to thank Dr. Ransdale for being here. We appreciate his presence, his words, and thank all of you for giving us the opportunity to sponsor Rooster Booster. Thank you. We would like to say we just welcomed, uh, welcomed an intern from Western Kentucky University this week at the radio station, Sydney Rodney from uh, the West Louisville Rodneys. And uh, she was on the air for the first time yesterday morning. And a bunch of her friends were on the radio station Facebook page uh, calling her out and saying, the only reason you want to work at the radio station this summer is you don't have to spend time in the fields. <laughs> so that's the spirit. <laughs> Go, Sydney. <laughs> at this time, it is time for our chamber update. And to present that for you, our president and CEO, Candace Brake. Chad. Good morning, everyone. We uh, have a, an update this month. First of all, we've been getting lots of phone calls on when the Golf Classic is. It's going to be on August the 25th. Sponsorships are now available and teams are. That fills up very quickly. So if you're interested, uh, give us a call or go to the website. CYP has a busy month. We have uh, the uh, wine tasting at SIP Owensboro tonight. Uh, next lunch meeting is next Thursday, and um, CYP will be volunteering with Habitat for Humanity. Virginia, thank you for that opportunity. Um, on Saturday, June, uh, June the 10th, and then dining with the Daylilies at Western Kentucky Botanical Gardens, which is hosted by the Miller House. So there's a lot of different things this month for CYP to be able to do. The 40 Under 40, we've received a, a 
amazing number of nominations. We will be getting those together and sending applications out to the nominees in the next couple of weeks. June ribbon cuttings, June the 1st, Wingfield Inn and Suites. June the 2nd, Just Chill. June the 7th, Shane Satterfield State Farm Insurance. June the 8th, Five Guys Burgers and Fries. And June the 15th, again, SIP Owensboro. Those ribbon cuttings are always a lot of fun and members really enjoy getting to see uh, the community. So we encourage you all to be there. The network has a busy month as well. Um, I'll ask you to go to the website and look for those dates. That's a group that meets once a week to connect and connect with business ideas and to uh, develop new markets and relationships. Small business health fair. Owensboro Health recognizes that small businesses don't really have a lot of, of the resources that larger businesses do with, with health uh, programs and wellness programs. So they're going to provide our first ever ever health fair for chamber members. After July Rooster Booster, we'll be in the lobby. We're going to invite every chamber member who's healthcare related also to set up a booth free of charge. And the, uh, Owensboro Health will have screenings, microfit screenings, a lot of different things um, in the lobby to be able to help your employees. So we encourage you and your employees to make it that day. It's gonna be a great opportunity, um, not only to see what services Owensboro Health offers, but also to, to increase wellness in your, in your company. Thank you for our May renewals. If you go to your Chamber Matters at your seat, there's a list of renewals who have invested in our Chamber. Every month we remind you to uh, invest in those organizations because they have stood up and understood how important it is to invest in you. Alorica Leads. So we had an opportunity to put together a program for our new corporate partner, Alorica. Um, we created a leadership Owensboro program over a couple of weeks um, to help them through their interim period to get involved in the community and just to see what Owensboro has for them. It, it was a great opportunity to get to know the employees and to connect, but also to connect what Alorica intends to do for our community. This is our great group picture. So I'm going to introduce the graduates of Alorica Leeds. And when I say your name, if you would stand up, and then at the end, we'll give you a round of applause. Just keep standing though, okay? Christopher Rideout, Chadrick Smith, Stephanie Bowling, Glenn Miller, Norman Valdez, Matthew Simpson, Rachel Adkins, Melissa Barrera, Roni Kahn, Jessica Gish, Kaylee Highland, Caitlin Kuykendall, Kayla Propes, Wandra Simmons, John Statz, Paris Wedding, Stephanie Blair, Brandy Calhoun, Amy Law, Stephen Mattingly, Andrew Peevler, Bryson Wedding, Isaac Carter, McKenna Goff, Hannah Hutchinson, Janet McMaster, Susan Wathen, Alan McManus, Trish Smith, Katie Blanford, Eric Farmer, Brandy Gayette, Jesse Canary, Christy Carter, Shelby Crane, Claudia Alonzo, Cody Stone, Justin Curry, Jordan Simpson, Mackenzie Brown, Brian Applegate, Kim Bruner, Kayla Davis, Robin Harrington, Courtney Johnson, Wade's looking at his watch, Casey Lindsay, <laughs> Kaylee Shaver, Angelina Sokolowski, Marjorie St. Clair, Cheryl Ayers, Bay Brown, Marshall Dragoo, Jarrett McMaster, Kimberly Malay, Harley Rudder, Megan Winstead, Jessica Gilbert, Bailey Hall, Bethany Lewandowski, Alyssa Roberts, Lisa Woods, Scott Clark, Carrie Campbell, Tony Wiles, TJ Sanderfer, Aaron Abramson, Skylar Sparks, and last but not least, John Malloy. Please give these wonderful people a round of applause. It's been a pleasure to get to know you. Okay, thank you all. At your seats, our new Go Chamber is there. As you can see the front cover, we have um, Billy Reed and our new chef at the convention center. It's the hands that feed us. 
And what we're doing this month is highlighting just the vast number of food-related industry and small businesses and corporations that we have that are chamber members and just how that, that industry really touches every aspect of our community. And with that in mind, Farmer's Market, at your seat, you have Farmer's Market bags. They opened last week. Um, they're going to be at the door. Suzanne Cecil White is here, and several of our producers are here as well. If you need a bag, uh, they'll be at the door afterwards. Um, it's a great opportunity every weekend to get out and see people in the community and support our local ag producers and, and healthy lifestyle. And I don't know if you've seen the new <laughs> merch that John Conti has, but it's really good. John Conti, thank you all. And now you're on Amazon selling your products there, which is just another way that your company has diversified and innovated. So congratulations to that, and thank you for always being here. See, Dr. Rensdale, we have so much going on here, don't we? <laughs> Um, every year we honor our Business of the Year awards, and part of those awards is to honor a non nonprofit, an outstanding nonprofit. So this year, Bullwear Mission was our winner. We would like to present to you their video that we presented our, at our annual celebration. Bullwear Mission uh, seeks to serve the displaced population of this community. Um, we bring them in, give them a place to live, um, and we work with them on the issues that brought them here in the first place. Everybody that we get is different, and um, a success could just mean that they have a job for the first time in their life, or that they have their own place to live for the first time in their life. Um, a success can mean getting their children back. It can mean just having a second chance at life without all the things that dragged them down and, and brought them to us in the first place. Hi, my name is Leah Taylor. I'm the Executive Director at Bullwear Mission. We've been serving this community for 95 years and we're located at 609 Wing Avenue here in Owensboro. Years ago we um, introduced a licensed substance abuse program and now that's a very big part of our program. We really try to constantly look at what are the real needs of the people we're serving and what can we do to serve them better and what can we introduce to our program um, to help them be more successful in life. I think um, what I would want to hear from the people who came here was that we changed their lives and we changed the lives of their families and their friends. Um, that's the important thing is that we're making a difference. We would not have been here 95 years without this community and part of that is the partnerships that we have through the businesses and the churches and the other organizations that are here that support us. And so I think the biggest benefit that we have through the Chamber is the relationships that we're able to build because of the Chamber. You know, whether we win or not, we know we're making a difference in the lives of our clients, um, but it's really nice to know that um, the community knows that we're doing it too. And so it, it would just mean a lot to us to win this award. Lee and the folks from Bowen Mission are here today. You guys want to stand. They're somewhere amongst you. I saw them today. There she is. Leah Taylor, everybody. To introduce our guest uh, speaker today, we have, of course, uh, the chair of the chamber board with us, Mr. Wade Jenkins. Thank you and good morning. Uh, Candy was calling me out for looking at my watch. Actually, my wrist happened to be itching right in that very spot. So, uh, uh, yes. So, anyway, I do get the pleasure always to introduce the guest speaker, and today is, is equally as fun. Dr. Gary Ransdell was named the ninth president of Western Kentucky University on September 12, 1997. He will compete, complete his 20th year as presidency with his retirement from WKU on June 30th, 2017. The WKU Board of Regents has approved a President Emeritus title for Dr. Ransdell immediately upon his retirement. Dr. Ransdell has led WKU through a dramatic transformation from a university of regional importance to a leading American university with international reach. Since 1997, WKU enrollment has swelled from 14,500 to 21,000, and annual graduation numbers have grown from 2,500 to 4,200. Additionally, Dr. Ransell has had led numerous transformative initiatives 
that will leave a lasting impact. Dr. Ransdale currently serves on the Board of Trustees for the Institute for Shipboard Education, which operates the Global Semester at Sea program, where he will begin his new job as President and CEO of Semester at Sea on January 1st, 2018. Help me welcome Dr. Gary Ransdell. Thank you, Wade, very much. It is great to be back in Owensboro, and Candace and Wade, great job with the Chamber of Commerce here. This, this chamber has it together. I have the fortunate opportunity to be a lot of chamber events across the state, and, and uh, there is no other rooster booster, I can assure you, and you all do it right here, and so keep up the great work. Very impressive. It's great to see Congressman Guthrie here. Brett, great friend. Uh, I'm going to talk a lot about the second congressional district here in the next few minutes, so uh, I'm delighted that you're here. Um, and I learned this morning coming in, Tom Watson, that you're mayor again. Congratulations. Great job. I've, <laughs> yes. I've known Tom for years. And so I guess you're mayor two, like is in Roman numeral two. So. Junior. Junior. All right. Got it. Got it. Got it. Sarah Hulse was on the Board of Regents that hired me in 1997, was a great member of our governing board and had been a great friend over the years and a great ambassador for Owensboro. Sarah, it's great to see you again. Uh, and uh, Debbie Feldman, Debbie's right here. She is the president of our WKU alumni chapter for Owensboro. And by the way, she, you just see her if you want to buy an Aaron Kaiser big red print. She's got them available for sale. How about that, Debbie? I, I knew I'd get that one in for you. The last 20 years has been an, an amazing opportunity for me, and I can assure you that for those 20 years as President of WKU, Owensboro has been in the middle of so much of what we have been about. And before I do anything else this morning, I don't know if he's here or not, but I certainly want to acknowledge and thank Reed Hare for his leadership and the role he has played to help make WKU, Owensboro and an actual physical campus uh, possible here in Owensboro. So uh, on behalf of the faculty, staff, students, and alumni of WKU, I'm going to thank Reed Hare and Owensboro Fis or, uh, Davis County Fiscal Court for what they did to help create the Reed Hare building on the WKU campus. Reed, I don't think you're here, but let's give Reed Hare uh, uh, applause in his absence. <clears throat> And Nick, what a great partner you've been from economic development initiatives and now to city schools, uh, just, just tremendous friendship and partnership for so many years. You've been involved in so many things that we've had going here in Owensboro. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you as well for your leadership. <clears throat> when I arrived back at WKU in 1997 to return to my alma mater, I was then uh, and certainly uh, am today the, the only president of the public universities in Kentucky that had the opportunity to serve in this position at his alma mater. And that's been a passion for me and something that I have treasured. And that thread has been woven throughout uh, what I've been uh, focused on these last 20 years. And I've been very fortunate. Uh, I arrived with a passage of uh, higher ed reform under Governor Paul Patton in 1997. And that created so many opportunities to make things possible for higher education in Kentucky and particularly for Western Kentucky University. That legislation focused the state on bachelor's degree attainment and set the stage for major enrollment growth, which that window of opportunity was open and we bust through it uh, for, for 10 or 12 years uh, when that growth was not only possible but, but important and necessary. Since then, uh, it's been my focus to ensure that WKU remained in control of its own destiny as an institution and as a driver of Kentucky's economy. Uh, we've been focusing on growing our enrollment, adding programs that are critical to workforce and economic development, including new degree programs in engineering and four new doctoral degree programs new in recent years in strategic areas that serve Kentucky's workforce needs, particularly in the healthcare professions, expanding opportunities and access at our regional campus locations, growing partnerships uh, with our KCTCS campuses to facilitate transfer and joint admissions agreements, and those partnerships now extend across the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and building an international focus through growth of international students uh, at studying at WKU and adding programs that provide an international uh, context to our curriculum 
uh, and to growing our study abroad programs. We've invested nearly a billion dollars in improvements to all four of our campuses with WKU in Bowling Green, Glasgow, Elizabethtown, and Owensboro. Uh, and we've completed two successful capital campaigns, uh, which netted over $300 million in new gifts and another couple hundred million dollars in gifts that have come in between and since those campaigns were completed. We've been through good times and bad times in terms of state support uh, for higher education in Kentucky, recession and a slow recovery, and now the pension obligations uh, continue to strain state resources in our commonwealth. Higher edu education institutions have suffered major reductions in state support, and you've heard me talk about that at Rooster Booster events uh, over the years. And while our costs uh, have risen and the Keys Scholarship has not been able to keep pace and the state's not been able to add new funding to that Keys Scholarship, and we've watched student uh, loan debt become a national problem, not just in the Commonwealth, but across our nation as well. Enrollments on a, all of our campuses across KCTCS and the eight public universities have tapered, including our enrollments here in Owensboro. Uh, and while stable at most of our universities, there isn't the growth that we experienced uh, throughout the 2000s, uh, that uh, the late 2000s, uh, the early 2000s, from about uh, 2000 to about 2010. There is significant growth at WKU and elsewhere, uh, but there is a great strain on resources that uh, is uh, in inhibiting that growth to continue in the future. Part of that's due to, to a declining high school population in Kentucky. And that decline is expected for another eight or ten years before it levels out and starts back in a growth curve. And it's forcing us to look outside our Kentucky borders for enrollments, out-of-state students, international students, in order to ensure that we have the diversity and the financial capacity to continue to strengthen the value of our degrees. Uh, we are so, uh, we're also addressing an improving job market, which is a great thing. One of the reasons we exist as a university is to drive Kentucky's economy. Uh, but more jobs means fewer adults and part-time learners are pursuing post-secondary education. And that's got a financial implication on what we do uh, in higher education. And the focus has shifted more from enrollments to outcomes, meaning that we must do a better job at retaining the students we enroll and drive them uh, to graduation. And that leads me to the next big thing, the next big reform in higher education in Kentucky as I move from the past to the present. Performance funding is the next big reform in higher education in Kentucky. Uh, this past legislative session, uh, we passed a bill to implement a new funding strategy that will reward institutions for performance. Governor Bevan and the General Assembly created a performance funding work group early in 2016, and I was fortunate and honored to be asked to chair that work group. Uh, I, I guess with my retirement, uh, everybody figured I had uh, I could be a bit more objective and a bit more neutral in how we approached that that work, and that certainly proved to be the case. We worked throughout the summer and last fall to come up with a model, which all of our public uh, universities and uh, KCTCS institutions uh, could support. And I'm pleased that the legislature uh, passed into law the funding proposal precisely as that work group recommended uh, it. Uh, the governor signs that performance funding bill into law next week at a ceremony uh, at, 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 at the Capitol, and I look forward to being there with him to, to sign that bill into law. The basic tenets of performance funding will create a more level playing field for all universities in terms of per student funding. Uh, we'll reward graduation volume and rates across our institutions. We'll pay more for degrees awarded in high demand STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, plus health uh, fields. And we'll measure and reward persistence, credit hours earned, transfers, the success of low income and underrepresented minority students. And there will be, there will be a modest redistribution of the current nearly $1 billion that, that the state spends on higher education in Kentucky uh, these days. But some universities will prosper in a performance funding model or improve their financial portion of that higher ed appropriation, and others may lose some funding based on their performance in the redistribution of that higher education budget. But that's the nature of, a, of rewarding performance as the driver for state appropriated funds 
for higher education. The General Assembly and the institutions are all now in agreement that this is the best way to proceed in order to try to improve the productivity coming from our colleges and universities. WKU is well positioned because we've been focused on adding programs in the STEM plus H areas, for example. We've been focused on enrollment strategies and critical partnerships that create more opportunities for transfer students. And I'm proud to say that WKU leads the eight universities in Kentucky in the number of transfer students from KCTCS institutions because we're surrounded by great KCTCS institutions across our primary footprint in Owensboro and Elizabethtown and Madisonville and Hopkinsville and Henderson. And uh, we're, we're, we're very fortunate because of our geography. Uh, including OCTC. Uh, we're well positioned because of our volume, now graduating some 4,200 students a year across all four of our campuses. But our graduation rate is 52%. That's better than the 36% it was uh, that, that I inherited in 1997, but still far short of where we need to be and where Kentucky needs us to be in terms of uh, the rate of which our students are graduating. So we still have a considerable work to do, and as we do improve those rates, our position in that performance funding model, which by the way, 52% is near the top of institutions in Kentucky, so that's put, that puts that in some context. We all have work to do in that regard. This funding model will be phased in over the next three years. It actually begins July 1, in just a couple of weeks. By 2020, 100% of the higher education funding from the state will flow through this performance funding model. Until then, there are some mechanisms in place to protect those institutions that are likely to be hit with reductions uh, due to falling short in the various performance funding measures when compared to the other campuses. But those safety nets will phase out in 2020. There's a, there's a hold harmless clause for Kentucky State, for example, because of uh, they've got a achieve some things in order to be able to compete uh, in a performance funding model. And then there's what, what we call a stop loss that limits the, the, the uh, decline in funding that could come about for the next couple of years at 1% and then 2% before those safety nets uh, phase out in 2020. And then every three years or so, a work group will be formed and the model will be reviewed and tweaked if necessary. Uh, Measuring performance uh, is important to Kentucky, and we all must have incentives to improve what we do to serve our Commonwealth. Uh, the eight public universities are competing against each other in one four-year sector, so we're all, work, we're all grouped together, and we will compete, uh, as will the 16 community and technical colleges in the KCTCS sector. Uh, so each of those two sectors starts with each sector's share of the current higher ed appropriation. So that's the starting point, and then how those funds might be redistributed will be determined uh, each year based on the previous year's performance. Uh, the key to success in this performance funding model, however, will be new money appropriated to higher education going forward. Hopefully, the work later this year on tax reform and pension reform will leave our Commonwealth in a better financial position. Governor Bevan has made it clear that, that he will call a special session to address tax reform, particularly focused on also reforming our uh, state employee pension system, which is <laughs> running a significant deficit and uh, it's gonna take about three quarters uh, of, of a billion dollars annually uh, to begin to, to uh, stabilize our, our, our pension system. But what I'm hopeful, and I'm pleased that Governor Bevan has made it clear that tax reform in Kentucky will intend, the intent is to generate revenue. I've always been puzzled by the thought of revenue neutral tax reform. I'm kind of like, well, what's the point of that? So I'm optimistic that if tax reform can indeed generate additional revenue, that not only can we address the pension deficit, but higher education might be a beneficiary of additional revenues generated uh, through tax reform. Uh, so that remains to be seen, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. And so let's look ahead for just a few minutes. Uh, uh, as, as I look to the future, it'll be important that WKU remain engaged in this region and seek to, go, to grow programs that contribute to the continued economic development of what I consider Kentucky's other 
golden triangle, or perhaps a golden rectangle, as, as I would describe it. Owensboro, Elizabeth Town, Glasgow. Am I supposed to do something with that? <laughs> Just a prop. Just a prop, okay. <laughs> Owensboro, Elizabeth Town, Glasgow, Bowling Green. To me, that's the golden rectangle in Kentucky. Congressman Guthrie, that kind of reflects the second congressional district as I look at my geography. So you happen to be the envy of every other congressman from Kentucky because you got it all right here in your district. As far as I'm concerned and as far as Western Kentucky University is concerned. But our goal is to improve the quality of life in WKU's primary service area through public service and raising the educational attainment level of our citizens. There are about 26 or 28 counties that form this geographic heart of WKU's mission. And our partnership with OCTC to create a seamless, tra to create seamless transfer for students coming from OCTC. Uh, our joint admissions agreement with OCTC and several other area community colleges. Our engagement in area high schools is critical. And our collaboration with area employers like Owensboro Health Regional Hospital. These are the ways that WKU will continue to contribute to Owensboro and Davis County's prosperity, and I think our shared future is exceedingly bright. Uh, but we want to boost your capacity to achieve your economic goals and to improve the quality of life in your community. That's why we exist as a public university. And I can assure you that WKU's commitment to this community is strong, it has been for the last 20 years and will be for the next 20 years and beyond. I have no doubt about that. Your commitment to WKU is tremendous and for both. Our commitment here and your commitment to Western Kentucky University is terrific and, and I'm grateful for that. No matter how international WKU becomes, no matter how many international students we enroll or international collaborations we create, and that's very important for our students from Kentucky to have that global context in their higher education experience and become citizens of the globe and understand the global dynamics that, that affect our everyday life every day. I mean, we pick up any newspaper, any television, radio report, what happens in another country instantly affects us and vice versa. And I want our students at WKUO or wherever they are within WKU system uh, to be citizens of the globe. But no matter how international we become, our friends in this golden rectangle are our priority. We exist to drive our regional economy, to identify and solve problems in our region, and to improve the quality of life for everyone within this region. And we want to attract and retain and graduate students from the great high schools that serve the heartbeat of WKU student body. With the exception of Jefferson County, the four top producing counties for WKU students make up the geographic corners of this golden rectangle. Davis, Hardin, Barron, and Warren counties. Some 25% of WKU student body hails from those four counties alone, and 50% comes from all the counties that fall within those corners of this golden rectangle. And when you add in Louisville and Nashville, you're up to 70% of WKU student body. So this is the heartbeat of, of WKU. I want to talk just a second uh, on a personal uh, uh, perspective. When I began my duties at WKU in 1997, I assured everyone then that this would be my home. This would be our passion, both Julie and me. And I've been so fortunate to have lived out that passion for these last 20 years. And it has been a passion for us. We have been all in. All in for everything WKU, but all in for everything Kentucky. But 20 years has been a good run for me as president of a major university. The world is different today than it was when I started this job, Sarah, 20 years ago. And if I were someone in my mid-40s, I'd be ready to tackle some of the challenges that await us. But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and so I look forward to other adventures and other opportunities, and I'm proud to turn the reins of Western Kentucky University over to Dr. Tim Caboni, who is currently the Vice President for Public Affairs at the University of Kansas, who will begin his duties on July 1. But the time is right. I'm pleased to be able to go out on my terms, 
to go out on top, if you will, and to ensure a smooth and pleasant transition of leadership. And I can assure you that not every major university has the opportunity to have a smooth and pleasant transition of leadership. And there's no way I would ever, ever allow my university to be in a position where it would be anything other than fun and pleasant and celebratory. These last few months have been wonderful with much to celebrate. Going through a lot of lasts these days, last this, last that. Uh, but it has been terrific and it's been so gratifying uh, to be able to have this opportunity to share this moment with everybody who makes up this university family. But our future is bright and strong. I do look forward to just being a fan and a loyal alumnus. And I've, as I've told a lot of people over the uh, last few months that uh, uh, when I'm just a loyal alumnus and hanging out, I can yell whatever, whatever I want at the referee, and it <laughs> won't matter. I won't be a nest well, I might be accountable. They might still kick me out, I guess. But I look forward to just being a fan and, a, and an alumnus. And I hope you join me for many years to come in support of Western Kentucky University, our university, your university in this golden rectangle of Kentucky. I'm not, however, ready for a rocking chair. <laughs> On January 1, I will become the president of the Semester at Sea program, which is based out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Julie and I built a home in Bowling Green four or five years ago, and we've now fully moved into that home, and that will be home for us. Uh, but I do look forward to this next adventure, and it allows me the opportunity to be fully engaged in higher education and to continue to pursue my passions for internationalization. But I don't have to be on some other campus saying the same things I've been saying for the last 20 years and act like I would mean it, because I couldn't, and I wouldn't. My passions are not transferable to any other institution. There's only one university as far as I'm concerned, and it's the university that I've been fortunate to serve for these last 20 years. But going to some, and I've been on the board for a semester at sea for a few years, and that's a global, the world's leading study abroad program where 600 American college students board a ship for a full four-month semester, circumnavigate the globe with about 12 ports of call throughout that voyage, and they earn 15 hours of college credit through Colorado State University, who is the academic, which is the academic partner because students have to earn credit from an accredited university. And so that's why I'm going to be based out of Fort Collins, Colorado, uh, where there's a staff of about 60 people, and it's about a $65 million a year uh, financial operation. Uh, and every semester, you recruit a new student body and a new faculty of about 30 faculty, kind of an all-star faculty across American higher education, and a student affairs staff of about 20 people. The crew of about 180 people on the ship remains on the ship, and that's on, on, under contract. But it's, it's an amazing program, and it's life-changing for students to have the opportunity to earn 15 hours of credit on board a ship, circling the globe, stopping in countries all over the globe as part of their learning experience and the courses they take uh, on that ship. Uh, so I look forward to that opportunity. My days will start with a weather report and a State Department report, depending on where the ship might be somewhere on the globe. Uh, but I'll be recruiting students, recruiting faculty, and raising money. Hmm, sounds familiar. <laughs> uh, and, and it will be a, a great new adventure for us. So I find, I've signed a five-year contract, and, and we'll do that for a while. But I can assure you, Kentucky is home, and we will be back uh, in Bowling Green uh, full-time in a few years, and we'll be back off and on. And I look forward to being back in Kentucky and to coming back to Owensboro as often as I possibly can in the future. Our deep roots and loyalties are evenly divided. As I've said to some folks lately, Julie and I first are Americans, then we're Kentuckians, and then we're Hilltoppers. And we will defend and support the noble values and the virtues of all three of those noble enterprises as long as we live. And, and we're so fortunate to be able to live in a nation and in a commonwealth and to be associated with the university that brings out the best in us and brings our passions and emotions to the surface. And I've performed these duties and pursued these duties and not been afraid to express those emotions in that WKU spirit in the pursuit of what we've been about. Uh, so please accept my sincere thanks to everyone in Owensboro and Davis County 
for your support, your collaboration, your partnership, and most of all, your friendship. Uh, and I must finish with some thoughts to thank Jean Tice, Jean, for your leadership. Uh, you, you stepped forward at a time when this campus needed leadership, and you have performed it admirably, you and your team at WKU Owensboro. Uh, and I want to thank Scott Williams uh, at OCTC. We have a great partnership. So, Scott, thank you. And finally, I want to thank Father Larry Hostetler of Brescia and my dear friend, Bart Darrell at Kentucky Wesleyan. I've been fortunate to work with Larry for several years. And I've been fortunate to work with a few presidents at Kentucky Wesleyan over the years. But I tell you, you got it right this time. You got it right this time. I've known Bart for a long time. He's been close to our family. Uh, and it doesn't get any better than Bart Darrell. So Bart, congratulations, my friend. Keep it going. <clears throat> Thank you, Owensboro. You're terrific. I look forward to getting back as often as I can, and let's get it going. Go Tops. Thank you. Dr. Gary Wansdale. Jesse, right? Jesse? You should see if he'll let you use your tissue paper tuition for a semester at sea. You're great. Thank that would you. be awesome. Sorry, Gary. Um, before we close today, this is so exciting. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, in just a little over two months here at the Owensboro Convention Center, uh, Lower Mission will be hosting the fifth annual Dancing with Our Stars competition and gala event. And did you know that we are blessed to have on the dais a former champion of Dancing with Our Stars? <laughs> Wade Jitterbug Jenkins, everybody. <laughs> And today we're turning our Rooster Booster breakfast into Good Morning America because we're going to have the official cast reveal. <laughs> Anybody with a tech brat back? Oh, there we go. The official cast reveal for this, for this year's Dancing with Our Stars. So, guys, it's time to loosen up a little bit. Oh, Candace. You are breaking the flow. Leave the remote alone. OK. So let's meet the couples competing for this year's Mirrorball Trophy. <laughs> you should spin it around and see if you can get lights going. There we go. Couple number one competing for the Mirrorball. He is known as the Vision Ninja. Put your hands together for Dr. John Murray Adams and his professional partner, Zumba instructor extraordinaire, Jessica Hodges. Okay, um, Adam's gonna need a little more flair from you, okay? I'm gonna say that right out of the gates. There we go. Dr. John Murray Adams and Jessica Hodges. <laughs> <laughs> Your second celebrity couple competing in the fifth annual Dancing with Our Stars. He is a motivational speaker, ambassador for Touch Bionics, and a patient model for Advanced Arm Dynamics. It's Jason Coger and his professional partner, and you all know her well, because this girl can move, from Music Studios, Leanne Music! <laughs> Leanne, just be careful with the partner stunts, okay? If you try to lift with him with those bionic arms, he can throw you to Saturn and back. <laughs> and moving on, couple number three. He is the current Associate Athletics Director for External Operations and Director of Major Gifts at Kentucky Wesleyan College. Put your hands together for Mr. Brad Moore and his celebrity partner, oh, there we go, and his celebrity partner, a former instructor of the Davis County High School Latin Dance Troupe, Caitlin Nonweiler. 
Our next couple to compete for the Mirrorball Trophy, she is the Executive Vice President, Manager of Mortgage Quality Management with U.S. Bank Home Mortgage. Her celebrity, her partner rather, is, I love this, started dancing at the age of six. When his older sisters introduced him to Michael Jackson videos. Please welcome instructor Philip Page and his celebrity partner, Catherine Raymer! <laughs> Catherine clearly couldn't be with us today, but she randomly has a cardboard cutout of herself. <laughs> Our next couple, she is, has been a member of the Greater Oswald Board of Realtors for over 12 years. Happens to be a fabulous friend of mine, because she's so fabulous. He is a tooling specialist for engineering products at Premium Allied Tool, and is a member of the Owensboro Ballroom Dance Club. The instructor, Joey Barr, and his celebrity partner, Brandy Rumba Roan! And your last couple competing in the fifth annual Dancing with Our Stars. Oh, that was really good, Brandy. He is a, uh, he works for L. Steve Castle World OC, top producing agent year after year. His instructor is a customer service representative for Old National Bank. Old National Bank, clearly a long history of champions in this competition. Please welcome instructor Brandy Genosa and her celebrity partner, Tyler Salsa Schickman. A big round of applause for all of our couples who on August 12th here at the convention center will be competing for the Mirabal Trophy in the fifth annual Dancing with Our Stars. Thank you all for being here this morning. Cha-cha your way out, and we will see you in July. <laughs>